The warmer months should be spent in the backyard having fun with your family and friends. Instead, many of us waste so much time pulling on weeds and doing other boring, repetitive chores around the house. At least I know I do, and you might as well. And uh, so for that reason, we need to pay attention because we want to enjoy these, year, these days. So welcome to Facebook Live. And today we're talking about quick, easy spring steps to free up more time for backyard summer fun. And today we have someone who knows a thing or two about this. We have someone from HGTV, one of our favorite do-it-yourself handy man, Chip Wade. Hi, Chip. Hey, how you doing? It's so good. Thanks for being here. And I see we have so much product here. And this is great stuff for anybody who loves to do it themselves. That's it. And uh, because of that, we have a lot of people viewing. So if by chance you are a do-it-yourselfer or someone who wants to do something around the garden, please feel free to engage with us and uh, reach out to us on Facebook and we will try to get to as many of your questions as possible. But first, Chip, we are coming off the cold months right now, which means many of our gardens, mine too, is a mess. That's it. So uh, <laughs> what small steps can we do now that are going to have a big impact for the spring and summertime? Well, you're right. This is the time where you kind of get that sense of spring. Mm -hmm. A lot of parts of the country still have snow on the ground, but spring is right around the corner. Yeah. I'm a huge advocate of doing a little bit now mm -hmm. and investing in these months to come so we can actually have fun during the summer. Because I want to be sitting by the pool, mm -hmm. playing with my kids, mm -hmm. grilling out burgers, not pulling weeds, not having to build things mm -hmm. when it's nice and beautiful outside. Me too. So. I want to do it. So we should get started. <laughs> what are some of the simple things we could do? So for starters, what I like to do is do the, clean the slate. Mm -hmm. So cleaning out your porches, your patios, your decks. Mm -hmm. One, I always like to pick a tool that I uh, recommend all homeowners having. So, you know, uh, things like an 18 volt toolkit is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, having just a generic set of mechanics tools. A pressure washer actually fits right in that wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be a big fancy pressure washer. You don't have to have a big gas powered one that's high powered. Mm -hmm. Get you a electric one. It's mm -hmm. going to do 95% of what you need. If you're resistant to buying something, just rent one. You can get one for about $50. It's going to do everything you need. Mm -hmm. So so start by um, your say your decks. Mm -hmm. One thing that people do wrong when they're do using a pressure washer is they get the nozzle a little bit too close to the deck boards. Mm. What can happen is while you could definitely see some change happening, you could also damage the wood material. It could so splinter. It can splinter. It yeah. separates those fibers and can cause it to fray, which makes it not ideal to walk on. It also lets water get down into the boards itself. I know someone who got too close and it actually swirled the wood. Oh yeah, you could do all, it can actually make dents and, oh, wow. and, and cups and almost cut the wood. So how far should we be? About 16 to 18 inches is ideal. Okay. Uh, there's going to be plenty of power to really clean everything, but you're going to avoid uh, damaging the product. 16 to 18 inches, that's kind of like from the elbow to the tip of your Yeah, somewhere, somewhere right in there. Like I said, even, even anything more than 12, you're probably going to be okay, but that's just a nice safe distance. Power washers, are they expensive? Uh, they can be, but the ones that you need are not going to be. You could probably get something in like the $150 range if you wanted to buy one. Mm -hmm. uh, something, if you were really going to invest, I'd probably be looking at something in like the three or $400 range to get a nice quality unit. I love summer grilling. Okay. I enjoy spending my time outside in the garden yep. and grilling. So we need to clean the grills. Cleaning the grills is another big thing. Nobody likes to have those, you know, uh, nasty little granules down in there. No. Now, what you want to start with is not just worrying about the grate, but the underside down by the burners. All mm. of the ash and the debris from grilling gets clogged up in there. It can affect yeah. the gas from coming out, but it can also cause flare-ups, mm -hmm. which ruin your perfect steak, mm -hmm. right? So you want to take the grates off, clean out the inside with a good degreaser. But on a day-to-day -day basis while you're using your grill, you might have something like a wire brush like this. You got one of these yeah, at, at the house? Yeah, absolutely. Or uh, one of these kind of abrasive pads. What ends up happening is all of my uh, uh, wire brushes like this end up getting rusted out, getting nasty bug stuff all of it. And the last thing I want to do is use it. We still the use ground. the old ones. Oh, what's that? No, it looks oh, just like, like that's damaged. Yeah, it's way they're, too they're damaged. damaged. I need a new and one. So <laughs> instead of using this rusty thing and feeling like you're going to get tetanus, right? Yeah. Which just don't even go to the store and buy a new one. I actually use aluminum foil, okay. which a lot of the best tips are stuff you already have in your house. So get a thing of aluminum foil, crush it up into a ball okay. that's about the size of a baseball, and you can use that as your abrasive pad to clean. And you're also using like white vinegar, it's yes. a great cleaning agent. And you white vinegar, you could use that for anything, really. You can. Actually, white vinegar and um, uh, and baking soda. Mm -hmm. That is like the the duality that you can use cleaning the inside of your house, the outside. It's natural and it's uh, it's very effective. Coffee cups too. Oh, there you go. There. Learned that from my grandmother <laughs> back in the day. It comes in handy. And we can do it ourselves. I love it. Now, also when you have the grill on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. um, 
cutting an onion in half. You probably have seen this before, but actually you get like an onion, the, like a nice good size onion, mm -hmm. split it in half. You can actually use that on the grill. Mm -hmm. The acid and the water in the onion actually breaks down that debris on the grate, kind of acts nice like the vinegar. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And then spraying a little olive oil or a little nonstick spray in between keeps your metallic uh, grates from rusting. Absolutely. It's so important to get in there and clean that ash out because can't that eat through the grill? Oh, absolutely. It's rust. It can rust all the way through. Oh, wow. Yeah, we yeah. need to get on that this time of year in particular. Something else we need to get on right now is about weeds. I hate weeds. <laughs> Everyone I know hates weeds, and we hate weeding. So what yep. can we do? So there was a survey done where the number one headache for Americans mm -hmm. in their backyards and their gardens is weeds. Weeding, of course. Which is not a shocker. We right? want to enjoy our gardens. We do not want to weed. E exactly. So on average, uh, one reason why it's such a kind of a backbreaking and tedious task is we're spending up to five hours on average as Americans every wow. month doing nothing but pulling weeds. It's like the biggest waste it's of time It's a waste ever. of time. A huge waste yeah. of time and it's, it's dirty and it's messy and while gratifying, when you pull weeds, oftentimes more mm. weeds can, can yeah. come up. So one thing a lot of people don't realize is weeds they oftentimes make a ton of seeds. So like a crabgrass plant, yeah. it's prominent all over the place. It's coming up right now as we speak. Uh, one plant every season can make up to 150,000 seeds. It's kind of what? like, That's what? a lot of seeds. So we understand the weed wow. epidemic when that happens. So they can drop their seeds. It can be inside the soil. When you mm -hmm. pull a weed out, it actually can bring up seeds that were dormant in the soil and cause more to grow. You have to be careful. Right. I was telling my mother this. I went and go to visit, and next thing I know, every time I see her, she's out weeding because yep. she does the garden, and the weeds are all up along uh, the driveway. Yep. And they're just laying there. And my grandmother back in the day, she would just take a weed throw it over her shoulder and but they're spreading all these weeds That's, all over the place. Exactly. When I, if, if, whenever, it's counterproductive. When you are pulling weeds out, it's yeah. important to not just like dump them somewhere because okay. even that that group of soil can um, uh, can splay weeds everywhere. So I actually keep a bag with me. Okay. So instead of making a pile of them, I just take them out and can put them straight in. Okay. There's a weed war out there yep. and sometimes we're losing. We need help <laughs> winning. So what kind of products can we use to actually beat these weeds? So the, I, my, I'm a huge advocate of not having to pull the weed to begin with. The me only too. way to remedy that is mm -hmm. to stop the weed before it starts to grow. Okay. And the best way to do that is with something called a pre-emergent. Okay. So I actually have some products here that kind of showcase uh, some ones that I would recommend. This is actually one from Preen. Mm -hmm. I've worked with Preen for a number of years. Okay. This is a brand new product called Preen Extended Control. This is a pre-emergent, it's a granule, it has this nice little flip top lid mm -hmm. where you can actually go and you can spread it around your garden. It's, it spreads out these granules evenly and what it's doing is it actually creates a barrier on the soil okay. that keeps weed seeds from growing the roots. That's the mechanism. So okay. the whole idea is we put it down, the weed never grows to begin with. Oh wow, that's preventative. So yep. no roots, no weed, no weeding. That's exactly right. That's awesome. And there's a lot of products out there, but one reason why I float uh, more towards the preen line is these guys have been basically the gold standard mm -hmm. for professional gardeners for the past 50 years. Okay. Now they've got the extended control line, which will stop weeds for six months. Okay. So again, I don't like to play around. If I'm gonna go for it, if I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna take some effort to try to stop weeds, if I did it right now, mm -hmm. this is going to to last us all the way through the summer. That is perfect. Which is what we want. We want to be outside it's playing. Like two times a year. You do it in, if you do it now, you're set all through summer and then you do it again later in the fall. That's it. Six months times two, you're covered year And round. then you could totally enjoy the garden the rest of the time. <laughs> exactly. Isn't that great? Yeah, I, I love this. I love the, uh, t the the lid right there just because yep. you could get into some of those really hard to reach areas too. That's it. Because a lot of people, they, they're hard they're, to get into those little nook and cranny areas. That's it. And so when you have a, a nice little handle like this, yeah. and it, when it spreads it out, people are like, well, I don't know how dense to do it. It kind of does it automatically. So you don't really honestly have to know that much about what you're doing That's to easy. get great results. That's very easy. So I know in most neighborhoods we see lots of mulch. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. adds to curb appeal. Yep. Uh, but when we put that mulch down, I know that there could be weeds inside there. So do we put this on top? Do we mix it in? How does it work? You can put it anywhere. However, you're exactly right. With mulch, when you put it on, oftentimes there's seeds and weed seeds inside the mulch that you're putting down. Yeah. So while mulch can suppress the growth of a weed, mm -hmm. you can be introducing more weed seeds in. So if you put preen right. on top of the mulch, okay. you water it in, you let it sit for 30 minutes, as soon as it gets uh, dry, it's going to create that barrier mm -hmm. and protect the mulch and the dirt below. 
Okay, excellent. Um, Jeff was asking about that okay. on Facebook. So there you go, Jeff. We know what to do now with the preen on, to on top of the mulch. Yeah, and thank you guys for asking questions. We're here for you guys. Uh, we have lots of tips to be able to give you, but if you guys want to engage with us, just simply write them in the comments. Uh, we'll try to answer as many live yeah. as we can, but afterwards, we're definitely going to follow up. We want to make sure that every single question that you guys have about your garden, about outdoor projects, mm -hmm. or really, honestly, anything else, we're going to go back and review these and make sure you guys are all taken care of. Outdoor projects, but also things you want to do to have some fun. We've done all the work now. We've done the preventative work now, yep. so now we could actually... We yep. could actually have some fun, but before we get to my main question, I have a Facebook question I think that we want to, to do right now, and uh, we'll just wait for that to come. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one is about pansies, and every year they put pansies in a pot by the garage, yep. and then it just doesn't happen. Yeah. So what are they doing wrong? Well, what happens is in this time of year when you plant pansies, they get burned up. Mm -hmm. Right, pansies are winter plants. They like the cold weather. Mm -hmm. They're not very heat tolerant. Mm -hmm. When you put them, uh, when you plant them now, there's only a small length of time where they're going to actually survive because that mm -hmm. sun's going to hit them. They're going to burn up. So even though they're out in the home centers right now, they look mm -hmm. gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You got to be selective on which plants you're buying right now because there's only a certain longevity. Mm -hmm. Also, you have to be even more careful when you're planting uh, these types of tender plants in raised planters because okay. when the heat hits a lot of these raised planters, it heats up the soil, which more so than in the ground because they're not insulated. Mm -hmm. So it's actually going to amplify that shorter lifespan of something like a pansy. Isn't this the time you're uh, getting close to May with zin zinnias and cosmos? Oh yeah, they, 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 all of these types of plants are coming out okay. and there's so many beautiful ones that are, gonna, that are going to be better just like those that'll last better through the summer. The main goal though is to start with a clean slate. So make sure there aren't weeds there to begin with. That's right. And then you plant the seeds for flowers mm -hmm. and let them come up first. That's right. Uh, you want about three inches of flower, I think, and then some leaves and then you could put the preen on? Yeah, as long as we have, uh, like I said, as long as we have some foliage okay. that's developed, you're past the point of, uh, of germination. So preen actually works on the seed before it actually starts growing. So it keeps that barrier mm -hmm. and then it has those, the, the, it keeps the roots from growing. Chip, one of my favorite things to do is you do all the hard work now. Yeah. So then you could actually just sit back <sighs> and you could actually enjoy the garden, look at your flowers, look at all the hard work you did and just sail through again through the summer enjoying your yard. I'm a big fan of pina <laughs> coladas. I like yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. Let's do that little margarita. I can already, I can already taste it. I can, and that's what the summer is about. It's about yeah. grilling out. It's about yeah. sitting by the pool or whatever you like to do. Removing those types yeah. of things, but focusing on the fun things. Yes. We can still prepare right now yeah. to amplify the funness of summer. Okay, let's move some of the fun stuff we could do. And I see some lights here. We yeah. could create some really beautiful ambiance so we could yeah. really enjoy the outdoors. So what else can we do? So lights here, I'd love to start here because mm -hmm. a lot of people have the wrong idea that it's impossible and too expensive to put exterior landscape lights out. I was going to say, money doesn't grow on trees. That's right. It does so, not. It does not. So You need to be cautious of the budget. Also, the if you're not an avid handyman or a great do-it-yourselfer, mm -hmm. it may be overwhelming to think, oh, man, i got to bury power lines and all this stuff. It might just be like, oh, that's too much. Yeah. Start slow. I okay. actually like string lights because mm -hmm. they're super versatile. Here's actually one uh, set that I picked up. These have some nice glass bulbs on them. Uh, Those are nice. And they're all LED. And they come, it's kind of like an extension cord, right? You can just plug it right into an electrical socket, mm -hmm. and you can hang these above like on a trellis, mm -hmm. do it kind of low to the ground to identify a pathway mm -hmm. or around your outdoor living sections. Um, this is really easy and cost effective. There's also options like this, uh, which are solar powered. Um, this kind of looks like a string of Christmas lights, mm -hmm. but they're all encompassing. You don't have to plug them in. They have the, the photo cell here. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they have a battery inside and a light sensor. So what I do with uh, items like this is I'll put them up underneath like a chair oh, or even an outdoor yeah. sofa or even your dining table. Imagine it has a nice glow the second that it gets dark. Yeah. It illuminates underneath kind of like an under halo. It's oh, kind of great. A, it's a cool effect. Yeah. Um, so next up after our lighting is a misting system. That's I love the misting system. Yeah, it does get very hot in the in the summertime. That's the whole thing, particularly late in the evening. So that is what happens: is it gets too hot outside, people are inhibited to go out just yeah. because they're like, "Oh, I'm just going to sweat. I'm going to just stay inside in the air conditioning." A misting system can be installed around in kind of the same place as the lighting around your seating, mm -hmm. around your outdoor dining tables. Mm -hmm. uh, they're basically just a series of little spray heads that mist out a little stream of water, not enough to get you wet, but okay. what it does is it brings down the temperature in this localized area several degrees. Mm -hmm. And that's just enough to take that, that crush off of that heat mm -hmm. to make it comfortable to, to stay. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. 
Okay, so we have the lighting. Yep. We have the the mist. Yep. Um, so anything else that we could do in the backyard? The number one thing. I, I bet I know it. Yeah. Go ahead. I bet I know it <laughs> because I want one. I don't have it. A fire pit. That's that's. I knew it. So it's a fire feature. A okay. fire feature is the yeah. number one thing that people ask for nationwide. Okay. I do landscape design all over the country, and mm -hmm. it's a so I ask people, what do you want in your backyard? Yeah. Inevitably, one of the top five things they ask for is some type of fire feature. Yes. So what does that look like? It can come in a a myriad of different options. There can be freestanding fire pits, a fireplace with a chimney, more like a chiminea, just yeah. a place to kind of have like a really small, you know, gas burning, uh, something with a head that's more just for ambiance, not so much for heat. Yeah. There are so many different spectrums that you can do. However, people think, oh, it's gonna be too expensive. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a fire pit or some type of fire feature right now, I would definitely look into it because it is worth the hype because it hits a couple of different really important things for outdoor living. It creates the look and feel, that ambiance. It invites you out there. Yeah. It provides warmth and a destination all at the same time. Mm -hmm. So anytime you can get more more than one thing happening for you by just installing one yeah. individual item, you're winning. You know, first thing comes to me is safety, yep. usually. Uh, where are some of the best places to put a fire pit? Can you have it close to your house? Can you put it on a deck? So great question. I get asked that specific question all the time. Uh, not great practice to put it on a deck, as you know, no. it's it's wood <laughs> or even uh, composites. There, they can still be flammable. Mm -hmm. They can get damaged. So I never recommend having something up on a deck without it being uh, in an enclosed, like actual masonry fireplace. Okay. Um, the element for putting it out in the yard, typically you're going to want to get it about 12 to 13 feet away from any structure. Okay. The whole idea of why you would do that is. The, the, you know, the embers can float around, right? That's a safe distance for them to float up into the sky and be beautiful without catching something on fire. So right. even uh, underneath any foliage or trees, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're about 13 feet away. Okay, 13 feet away, that's yeah. the safety. We have a Facebook question here too. Okay. Uh, this is uh, Mike on Facebook. Can I use preen on my veggie garden? Uh, you can, but you got to use the right kind. Okay. What so, kind should we use? So preen extended control is for your your general general gardening beds. Mm -hmm. For your vegetable gardens, there's a, a preen uh, veggie. Uh, it actually has an organic type of preen that you can put right on your vegetables. It's not going to hurt it. You can eat it. It's all it's all very safe. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So I think some of the big takeaways we can make everything look nice, but we really want to enjoy our garden. Yep. That's the key thing. So right now is a great time of year since it is spring. So if we put down some of the preventative treatments like preen now we get to enjoy the whole entire summertime and not have to worry about weeding and then we don't have to worry about that until the fall that's it so really two times a year with the new extended uh, pr uh, control preen mm -hmm. let you pretty much get ahead of the eight ball okay. so the one thing people are seeing right now is weeds are coming up yes uh, a lot of the weeds that are coming up n now germinated or, or they're actually from the fall they're perennial weeds that mm -hmm. actually are coming back so you're going to prevent a lot of what's coming up right now mm -hmm. In the fall. Okay. So again, right now we're getting ahead. Of so the this is the right summer. now the winter weeds. That's right, and we're going to get ahead oh, okay. of the the ones that are going to be coming up this time next year in the fall. Okay, excellent. So uh, I'm going to make sure I take care of the preen and uh, put that on my list of things to do, and uh, all, all this other fun stuff here as well. So another question I wanted to bring up, just because this is something that uh, often comes up with folks, uh, for safety outside mm -hmm. with regards to pets and maybe kids. Yeah. It's safe to use us out in the garden and have. Oh. So basically, one thing that you want to uh, do is just always re always read instructions on every single product. Uh, with preen, what you're going to want to do is you how you do it is you water it in. You want to give that some space and don't let anybody, even you, don't get, once you do it and water it in, leave it 30 minutes, okay. and after that 30 minutes, you should be good to go. Okay, absolutely. So uh, with regards to everything we have here, where can we go for more information? We've actually got uh, preen.com set up mm -hmm. for a lot of your uh, just outdoor tips an extensive uh, arrangement of facts about all weeds and plants and how to best take care of them in your gardens. Okay. Uh, and also on my website, chipway.com, I've got all kinds of projects, DIY how-to instructions for things that you can do to better your yard and better your backyard mm -hmm. right now. So once it comes summertime, we're okay. just laying back, sitting and enjoying. See, that's the key. <laughs> we want to enjoy the summertime and we want to get ahead of the weed that's right. so they don't come up in the future. That's right. And then we can just relax and enjoy the garden with our family and our friends. You got it. Absolutely. It'll look so beautiful easy. and it'll, be, it'll <laughs> look great. Okay, again, so for any more information, by all means, please check out preen.com. And uh, this was great information. Of course, this is the great and wonderful HGTV's <laughs> Chipway. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, thank you for and, having uh, me. And <laughs> all this stuff is great. I need to check it out. And uh, again, I love that cap right there. That's, That's going to cool. make my life a whole lot easier. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.